Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. We're known here in 45 Drives as doing a deep dive into um, plenty of open source storage technologies and everything around it and doing deep dives and showing you in the videos. Um, we're also known for is our newest division here at the company, 45 Home Labs, where we take our big, strong enterprise storage know-how DNA, if you will, and, and built this wonderful HL15 and other products um, that we brought to you. Now, what we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to take a bit of a simpler, higher level approach, and we're going back to the basics. How do we keep our data safe on here? And I'm not going to sit here and give you the math rundown of how RAID works and everything like that. That's no fun. We're going to go back to the roots of 45 drives, and we're going to yank some drives out of this system. We're going to build some different RAID volumes and show you your different fault tolerances and what that means to you. Because keeping your data safe, whether it's in your business or in your home lab, is the most important part. All right, quick little fun disclaimer thing before we get started here. We're going to talk through different ways to keep your data safe with RAIDs, but the safest way to keep your data, no matter what kind of RAIDed protection you have, is a backup. Put it in the cloud, put it on another HL15, put it on someone else's HL15, just put it somewhere else. That's the best way to keep your data safe. Rate it, back it up somewhere else. All right, everyone, before we dive into the main event of the video and I start ripping some drives out, I can't wait, let's just do a quick setup of what we got here. Uh, we've got our HL15, we're full 15 drives, 16 terabyte drives in it, the stock full build loadout, um, bronze CPU, uh, you can get this on the eStore. Right in front of me, the desktop that I'm accessing my storage server for is a preview of our new Thin Client product that's coming out. And uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be building the RAID via Houston, running on this, accessing it through our Thin Client. That's what we'll jump on the screen cap for. And I'll be going back and forth of building RAIDs, looking at files, pulling drives out, and uh, we'll, uh, we're going to have some fun. So let's get into it. Okay, let's start yanking some drives out of this system and, and, and see what this feels like. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to build a RAID Z2 pool. RAID Z2, for those who aren't aware, it's a RAID, a redundant array of inexpensive disks. The two means two parity, as in we can lose up to two disks and still access all our data. And the Z, well, that's ZFS. you got to tuck that in somewhere. So, let's create a storage pool. So, let's name this thing storage. It, call it whatever we want. RAID Z2, like I just said, and let's select all our drives. Next, pool settings, we'll just do defaults. Let's call this test then. Next, summary, and we'll make it. So now we'll wait a second as this pool creates. Okay, so our pool is built. Let's look at this thing. So we've got all 15 of our drives in one RAID Z group, and uh, like I said, we can pull two of these and still access our data. Okay, so we built our RAID Z2. We have a network share from the HL15 to the uh, home client here. Let's just view the video. VLC, the wonderful media player, everyone's favorite. Oh look, this is the sample videos when it matches old videos with the HL15. So here we go, look, I can scrub through it, everything's great. But of course it is, pool's in healthy shape, and that's not what we're here to do pull drive out of it. So, 1.8. Pull the drive out of slot 1.8. So let's take a look at, before I look at the file, reload the pool status here. And it is going to tell us that it is degraded. Boom, degraded. And if I expand here, it says 1.8 has been removed. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but that's what I was trying to do. So perfect. So let's go back to our network share. Still able to get there. Let's open VLC, select. There we go. We can still read everything. Perfect. Okay, but that's not enough. Let's pull another one out. One, two. So when that loads back in, we're going to see that two drives are missing. Two are out. So this is our two parity. So we're on our last leg here. I can still save this data. I can still read it. Beautiful, there we go. Okay, it's working as it wants. But here we go, final drive being failed. Who's going out? Let's say 112, see you later. 
I won't even reload. I'll hit a reload, but we'll go to watch the video right away. So this will take this a quick second. If I open this up, I'll probably even be able to get the first bit of the video because it got cached, right? But as I scrub through things, see, boom, freezes. It's trying to ask for more pieces of the data. It's contacting the server. The server is going, yep, the network share is there, but the pool is now unavailable because we've crossed that last limit of two parity. So RAID Z2, two parity, up to three disks out of your system before, um, before you can't get anything back. In our case, we're lucky we can pop the disks back in, unload and reload the pool, and everything will come back. So that's a quick look at how Z2 keeps your data safe. Two things to mention here. Why RAID Z2? I skipped one, went right to two. Can I do one parity? Yes, you can. But that changes the rules to one goes, and then after that second one goes, everything's gone. And in practice, with this much data, when you go to rebuild a RAID Z1, meaning that you replace the drive that failed, it has to read and work on every other disks and rebuild the data that was missing. This is going to put a little extra load on your disk, and if one, sh one more should fail during that, well, it's gone. So that's why we do believe here at 45 Drives, 45 Home Labs, that um, the minimum you should be doing with your RAID is a two parity. Um, trade off of a little more space, consume to parity, but it's worth it in the end. Because remember, the most important part of all of this, it's not really the hardware, not really all this, it's the stuff on the disks. It's your data. That's the stuff most important to everyone. So you got to keep that safe. Second point I want to make here is I put all 15 of my drives into one RAID group. Or in ZFS terms, they call them VDEVs, but we'll just call them RAID groups. Think about them groups that way. You can get some pretty complex topologies going with ZFS and there's all kinds of stuff to keep your data safe. But for point of illustration, we're leaving it at this. If you want to learn more, check out some of our other ZFS videos and we dive into different ways you can do stuff. So that's a Z2. Let's do this again with mirrors. Trust me, it's not redundant, <laughs> pun intended. It's really, really cool how many drives I'm going to be able to pull out. Okay, let's make a mirrored pool. So... For those unaware, we described uh, what the kind of RAID Z2 and parity meant and um, what a mirror is. It's a little more straightforward. A mirror is one drive and then the other drive after it is a complete mirror of that drive. So if I have two 16 terabyte drives, um, if I've got those in a mirrored RAID, the effective space is 16 terabytes, but I could have one whole drive fail and that's okay, we have a complete copy. With ZFS, you can have a series of mirrors all strung together. Like in this case, I have, I'm going to use 14 because you do need to use an even number of drives, but I'm going to have seven mirrors. So seven times 16, whatever that ends up, we're going to see when we make the pool. So that's a mirrored drive. And in this case, we lose 50% of our effective space, meaning that uh, multiply all your drives together, that's your raw space. The effective space will be 50% of that. But you're going to see how many drives I can pull out of this thing and still get all my data. So let's do it. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, ten. I have to count all the way now because I started 11, 12, and 13, 14. Okay, so we're going to make this pool. Storage, leave the defaults. Uh, call that test, next, and say make them. So we'll just wait as we create the pool here. Okay, so now our mirrored Z pool is here, and as we can see, we've got all our various seven RAID groups, um, starting at zero up to six. And uh, notice all the pair, one, 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 two, blah, blah, blah. The point is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull one disk out of each of this RAID group, and then we're going to go back and we're going to see that that file still plays. Um, so. Let's do it. Okay, we'll start here. So one and two is a pair. Let's pull two. Uh, four and three. Uh, five and six. I'll take five. Seven. Nine. Eleven. Thirteen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven discs. I have just failed in this array here. So um, let's see what happens. So I'll refresh. Before we even look at the video, let's just see what, uh, what our uh, ZFS manager tells us about the state of the pool. There we go, degraded. Um, pool is degraded and we have, like we just said, all those disks missing. But remember what we said, the pool is still degraded, not unavailable. 
So that means I should be able to go back to my files here. So again, we're connected via uh, network file sharing. Open with other application. Let's see, VLC, can I still get all my data? Boom, there we go. Look, the video plays. With that, seven drives removed from the 14 drive uh, Z pool here, and everything keeps going. So, with that said, that brings us to the kind of always the question with this. He goes, What is the right configuration for you? It comes down to balance of storage efficiency, how much of your storage devices you really want to like use and maximize versus how fault tolerant you want your pool to be. How important is your data to you? With a RAID Z2, we only lose two drives capacities worth of the whole array. So it's essentially about 80% efficient. If you use mirrors, well, it's 50% efficient, meaning you only get to use 50% of your storage. But I got seven drives missing here. I do have to make the caveat that if I unfortunately pulled these two drives, both one and two, that's not gonna, that, that's gonna cause it to not be accessible as well too. So you do need the right combination of drives with mirrors. So that's cool. But if I was to make my personal choice, I like two parity. I get a good balance of safety and I get a lot of my space. And any two of the drives can fail. Where this, you do have to be a little more careful with your mirrors. So what's right for you? Well, how important is your data? How important is the money spent to get the storage capacity you need? If you've got any more questions, you can always hit us up. We'd love to answer them. And uh, that brings us to the end of our demo. All right, so that's it for this video. It's been a while since I just got to rip drives out of a server on a video, so I was happy to do that. Uh, we have more in-depth videos on ZFS, on the different variations you can do. Um, we've got a bunch of other videos of us ripping stuff out of servers and showing, um, showing the redundancy, the resiliency of it. So uh, hope you guys liked that. Drop us a like, subscription, follow, all the social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, we'll catch you next time.